and I will be presenting joint work with Mekotorp. So what will this presentation be about? So in this presentation, we will focus on the interplay between uh, different problems and different uh, settings in the sublinear time regime. Specifically, we will focus on the following three problems on edge counting, edge sampling, and triangle counting. And we will consider these three problems in the, in the following three uh, settings, which I will introduce shortly. And throughout this talk, I will try to convince you that edge sampling is very central to sublinear time algorithms and that it is a useful tool for designing, uh, for designing algorithms for other problems. Specifically, both our algorithm for edge counting and triangle counting rely heavily on our algorithm for uh, edge sampling, which we, uh, which we give in our paper. So uh, because we are in the uh, sublinear time regime, we do not have the time to preprocess the whole input or to even look at the whole input. And therefore, it matters how exactly we can access the input. It matters what set of queries we are allowed to use to, uh, to query the input. So uh, in this talk, I will be focusing on uh, graph problems, as I already said. And specifically, I will be focusing on the query complexity of uh, the three graph problems in the three different access settings. And the important word here is uh, query complexity. Uh, and so we will be focused on query complexity, uh, not on time complexity. So a commonly used model uh, that has been used a lot in previous literature on sublinear time algorithms is the following. So essentially, uh, intuitively speaking, the model says that we have a graph, we have vertices. We can access the vertices. And then for a given vertex, we may uh, query its degree. And for a given vertex and an index, we get uh, index j we can get the jth neighbor of the vertex. We call this the index neighbor access model. In some papers previously, it has been called um, adjacent to list model, but uh, we decided against using that name as, uh, well, as uh, it cannot really be implemented using an adjacent to list, at least, um, well, if you look into uh, like a standard undergrad textbook, then usually uh, an adjacent to list is described as for each vertex, we have, a, we have a linked list with all the neighbors, and that cannot, of course, implement the third query. So for that reason, we instead go with the name index neighbor access model. There are some variants of this model. We may assume in addition that we have uh, random edge queries or, or uh, edge queries. So given some index i, we can get the eighth, uh, eighth uh, edge, um, or that we may allow pair queries, that is, for a pair of vertices, we may ask if they are adjacent, if there is an edge between them. So I will now suggest uh, two alternatives that generalize this index neighbor access setting. So one significant shortcoming of this setting is that nonlinear memory access is very, very expensive in practice. And this is not properly captured by the uh, setting. So uh, for example, if, if we store our graph on a hard drive, then one nonlinear um, memory access will cost us roughly the same as reading one to three uh, megabytes of data. That means that for the cost of reading just one neighbor, we can, uh, we can read several hundred thousand neighbors. Um, and uh, combined with the fact that in practice, most graphs do not have uh, many vertices with, um, with such a high degree, then I think it's a very reasonable assumption that uh, we may get the whole neighborhood of, uh, of a graph, uh, sorry, of a, of a vertex at a, at a unit cost. So there are two lessons from this. First one is that we should use the power of uh, linear memory access in our algorithms. And the second one is that uh, lower bounds that are proved for index neighbor, neighbor access, uh, they may not carry over to practice. Uh, so it's good to prove lower bounds in uh, some stronger models like the full neighborhood access model, which I will introduce. So in the full neighborhood access model, we assume that the vertices are numbered one through n. And then for a vertex, uh, we may get the whole neighborhood of v. Uh, or, or we, we may get the whole neighborhood of uh, the vertex. And now recall that we care about query complexity. And therefore, this means that we get the whole neighborhood at a unit cost. In this setting, 
we show that it's possible to estimate the number of triangles T in this uh, query complexity, which uh, improves, improves upon previous work, which has been in the uh, index neighbor access model. Uh, this, um, yeah, so at first glance, it may not be obvious that this is actually an improvement, but our complexity is never worse. And uh, on some range of the parameters, it's uh, polynomially better. We also proved that our algorithm is the best possible up to, uh, up to the dependency on epsilon. And uh, also, uh, the previous algorithm is known to be optimal in terms of n, n, and t. And therefore, we get a separation uh, between the two models by showing this algorithm. Uh, this algorithm is, depends uh, heavily on our uh, algorithm that I will talk about later for uh, sampling uh, edges uniformly. And uh, I will also talk about that later. So now the hash ordered uh, neighbor access. Uh, well, so first let me introduce, uh, well, let me remind you what coordinated sampling is. And then essentially uh, the um, uh, hash ordered neighborhood access is uh, just index neighbor access uh, with the additional ability to do coordinated sampling. So suppose that we have two sets and we want to sample such that uh, such that uh, if an element is sampled in one, then it is also sampled from the other. Uh, so for example, if we have these two sets, then if we sample 11 here, then it also has to be sampled here. If we sample three here, it also has to be sampled here. But if we sample four here, it of course doesn't have to be sampled here because it's not in the set. And this can be implemented by using a hash function. So if we have a hash function into uh, the unit interval, then if we want to sample an element with probability p, then we just add it into the sample uh, if its hash is uh, less than p. And because the hash values are uniformly uh, distributed on the unit interval, this happens exactly with the right probability. So now I can define the hash ordered neighborhood access. Uh, so in black is the definition of uh, the index neighbor access model. And now in red is the difference. So the only difference is that we have an additional hash function and we order the neighborhoods by this hash function, and uh, we can also evaluate the hash function. This can be efficiently implemented, and it could be part of some uh, APIs. And actually, some of the data structures that uh, could be used for implementing the quite standard query queries, uh, those, so the same data, stru data structures could also be used to implement the hash ordered neighborhood access model, or the queries from the hash ordered neighborhood access model. Uh, this can also be simulated using uh, the full neighborhood access, uh, this setting, and this is something that I will need later on in this presentation. In this setting, we show that it is possible to sample uh, uh, edges uh, exactly uniformly with high probability. Specifically, S edges we may sample in this complexity, and that improves upon previous work, which only sampled edges approximately. Uh, we also give near matching lower bounds. Uh, that show that our algorithm is uh, near optimal, but it also shows that the previous uh, uh, algorithm for approximate sampling is also near optimal, at least in terms of S, N, and M. We then show that uh, in, also in this model that uh, it is possible to approximate uh, the number of edges in a graph in this complexity. Uh, so essentially, in this first main term, we managed to get the dependence on epsilon from quadratic to linear, in comparison to previous work. Um, we also uh, improved the lower bounds and show that this is near optimal for epsilon being not too small. What is interesting about these two results is that actually uh, most of the algorithm, like 80-90%, is actually the same. So what we do is that we show an algorithm for sampling, uh, instead of sampling S edges, we show an algorithm for sampling edge, each edge independent with some probability p. And then that can be very easily uh, used as a black box to get both of these uh, results. So both of these results actually work in almost the same way. As a quick side note, we also considered some, uh, some um, problems uh, that, uh, and in some settings that were considered previously, uh, namely in the weaker index neighbor access model, it is possible to get essentially the same results for edge sampling as um, in the in the hash ordered neighborhood access, but only for sampling one edge. Uh, 
So you can see that the dependence on epsilon is only logarithmic, um, but uh, th this is only for sampling one edge. And uh, for sampling multiple edges, we would get linear dependency on S instead of square root dependency like we got on the last slide. We also show that the techniques that we develop for estimating the number of edges in, um, in the hash ordered neighborhood access setting, uh, the, some of the techniques can be used to give more efficient algorithm for um, uh, counting edges in uh, uh, the weaker index neighbor access model with peripheries. Again, we get in the main term, we get a dependence on epsilon from quadratic to linear. So now, for in the rest of the presentation, I will uh, show you an algorithm for estimating the number of triangles in a graph. Uh, in the paper, we have a more complicated, more involved algorithm, which is near optimal. Uh, what I will show you is just one part of the algorithm. The, the algorithm, um, it consists of several different parts. And uh, so I will show you one that in itself can also count uh, uh, the number of triangles, uh, but it is not optimal. So, uh, and I will design an algorithm that uses random edge queries. And of course, those are not allowed in our setting. So instead, then I will use the algorithm that I just uh, talked about uh, some two slides ago, uh, the algorithm for sampling S edges. So uh, I will now assume the full neighborhood access uh, setting. So note that for an edge, we can count the, the number of triangles that contain the edge in just two queries. So when you have an edge, you would, you, would, um, you would query both of the endpoints. And then the number of triangles that contain the edge is just equal to the uh, size of the intersection of the neighborhoods of the two endpoints. We denote this uh, number by t of e. And it's important to re remember that t of e can be very efficiently, uh, just, just in constant time, uh, sorry, constant query complexity can be efficiently uh, implemented. Now, the trick is that we assign each triangle to each edge, to its edge with the lowest t of e. And then t plus of e is the number of triangles that are assigned to e. This notion has been used previously for streaming algorithms. Uh, and uh, we use this idea uh, together with some uh, more ideas that I unfortunately don't have the time to show to uh, give the algorithm that we uh, give in uh, the uh, full neighborhood access model. Uh, so, yeah, so as I said, uh, this paper that you use this same notion uh, that is in the streaming setting. So consider random edge UV. Uh, now I'm describing the algorithm for counting triangles. So we have an edge UV. So we pick uh, W from the intersection of the of the neighborhood of the endpoints, and then we have a triangle because W is in neighborhoods of both U and V. So this is a triangle. And if the triangle is assigned to uv, the edge that we have sampled, then we, we, we define x to be a random variable. Uh, x is a random variable, and we define it to be equal to just t of uh, the edge that we sampled, and otherwise it's 0. And similarly, if w, uh, so sorry, if, the, um, if there are no triangles, uh, if the intersection is empty, then we also set x to be 0. We can calculate the expectation of x and variance of x the expectation is very nice in that if we multiply by m, then we get uh, we, the expectation will be exactly t. So what we do is that we try to get an estimate of this expectation, and then we estimate the number of uh, edges using the algorithm that I mentioned a few slides ago, and we just multiply uh, the, the estimate of the expectation by that estimated number of edges. Uh, the variance can be easily upper bounded by this expression. And this has been shown to be uh, not too big. And then what we do is that we just uh, take uh, enough independent samples to, uh, uh, to get the variance to be so small that, uh, that uh, the result will be concentrated around the expectation. And uh, if, if you do the math, then this will result in uh, this query complexity. But this is, of course, not our final algorithm because this uses random edge queries. And those are not allowed. So we use the eight sampling algorithm. And uh, that leads to this uh, query complexity. Now, the first term is actually optimal. Uh, it is in terms of n and t. But the second term is not. And we show an algorithm uh, as well as a near matching clover bound with uh, this uh, query complexity. 
Okay, so in summary, we uh, in this presentation, we focused on one standard and two uh, new models that we introduced. Um, so I'm saying uh, somewhat because actually the full neighborhood access model it has been considered in one uh, applied paper, or uh, at least uh, at least one that I know of. Maybe there are more uh, that we were not able to find. Um, we also focus on the dependence on epsilon, which has not been uh, the case in some of the previous work. And we give uh, new algorithms uh, and near matching lower bounds for the three mentioned problems in uh, both the previously considered index neighbor access and uh, the two new settings that we introduce. We also argue that edge sampling is a central problem to uh, sublinear time algorithms and that it's a powerful tool for designing, uh, designing uh, algorithms. For example, as I have shown on the last slide, um, we this, the, we uh, we got an algorithm for uh, the, the problem, which used random edge queries, and then we just use this uh, as a transformation to uh, re remove the need for random edge queries. And actually, this is also the approach that we use uh, to get a near optimal algorithm in our paper, is that we did uh, we designed an algorithm that uses both random vertex and random edge queries, and then we use uh, this uh, random uh, edge sampling algorithm. Uh, to get rid of the uh, necessity, necessity uh, to have random edge queries. Okay, so that's it from me and have a nice day.